I want to give you a walkthrough of a mini After Effects project just to give you a sense of how things are all put together. And if you want to follow along, you certainly may. Just go to the Working Files folder here. I've got it on my desktop, and I suggest you have it there as well. And double click on it to open it up. And then inside the Working Files folder, you've got an After Effects Projects folder. Just double click on that. And then open up 0202 Walkthrough simply by double clicking on it. Now you could open up After Effects and then go find this inside After Effects and open up the project that way, but it's easier just to double click on this file and open up After Effects this way. So here we go. So that opens up this After Effects project and your project should look more or less like this. It'll probably look a little bit different in particular because my workspace has less real estate than most folks will have. I'm working at a 1280 by 720 resolution here, which ensures that our Infinite Skills videos look sharp, that you can see the mouse cursor and you can see the text here cleanly. If I were to increase this resolution to a higher one, it wouldn't be so easy to see that stuff. So we could work at 1280 by 720. You're probably working in something like 1920 by 1080, so you'll have more stuff showing up inside your screen than I have. But still, your project should look more or less like this. Over here in the project panel are our assets. We've got a bunch of Adobe Illustrator layers from one single Adobe Illustrator file. And then we've got a comp here called Fish and Bubbles. If you see some other kind of icon here besides these icons, if you see an icon that looks like a color bars icon, that means you are not properly linked to your assets. And as I explained in the lesson 0104 relinking, you can relink to those assets. It's not that difficult to do. So if you do see a color bar here, what you need to do is to say right click on one of the color bar icons here or double click on it. But I'll right click here to show how that works. Just right click on it and say replace footage, go to file, and then track it down. Now these assets are inside the photo spin assets folder inside the working files folder. So you'd go to that folder and then scroll on down and find the fish and bubbles illustrator file and simply double click on that. And then that would find this one layer, the bubble one layer inside the fish and bubbles illustrator file and also link up the rest of these layers as well. So I'll cancel out of this now. So here we are inside After Effects, but I wanna show you where this file came from. It came from Adobe Illustrator. Let me switch over to that. Here's Adobe Illustrator with that file in it. It has several layers over here, and each of these layers is comprised of several paths. If I open up a layer here, you'll see that a bunch of little paths there that make up that fish, for example. And this graphic and a whole lot of other graphics images were provided to us by Photospin for our use inside our tutorial, and I greatly appreciate that they did provide these assets. They're really lovely. So this is how this file started its life here inside Adobe Illustrator as these layers and these paths. So when you open up an Illustrator file in After Effects, you have an option of opening it up as a composition. So let me switch back to After Effects. So when I brought this in, it came in with these layers separated, but it also created a composition named after the file, Fish and Bubbles. But when it came in, it came in with just these six layers inside the composition. I duplicated some of the layers. So let me show you how that works. I'm gonna go down here to the timeline, which is where our composition resides. And the timeline has a number of layers to it. You can see them here, seaweed, seaweed, bubble, 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 and things like that. Well, I took that one seaweed layer that looked like this, and I made three duplicates of it. So you can see there are four all together now. I changed the scale on them a little bit to make it a little wider here, a little bit taller here, smaller in the back, and narrower and smaller in the back and wider. I'll show you how that works. I'll just click on these four seaweed things by holding down the control or the command key to click on them so I can select a bunch of them. Get the last two here. I'll press S to open up scale. You'll see that the scale is different for each of these four layers. For example, the seaweed in the lower left-hand corner has a scale of 113 and 209. That means the X value is 113% and the Y value is 209%, meaning it's slightly wider than the original Illustrator layer and about twice as tall as that original layer. And then the other layer on front, the one to the right, is a little bit wider and a little bit shorter. You can see that the X value is greater and the Y value is less. And then two guys in the back, similar here. Scale is adjusted depending on the one on the left here. The one on the left there is a little bit narrower. It has a smaller X value. And the one on the right there is a little bit wider. It has a larger X value. The same height though. And notice the placement. The ones in the back, the ones that are behind where the fish comes in. If you see the fish here, you can see that it's ahead of the one in the back, right there, behind the one in the front. That's because the two little seaweeds in the back there are put at the bottom of the comp. They're a lower layer. The bottom layer is the water. That's the total background of this whole thing. And then a couple little seaweeds there in front of the background, but the fish is in front of the little seaweed there. 
And the other larger seaweed things are in front of the fish because they're toward the top or at the top of these layers inside this comp. So that's how that works. The position of the layers inside the comp determine where they are relative to other layers inside this thing in terms of being front to back. The three bubbles that come on the screen, one after the other, was one, two, and three. And they come on at those particular times because this is where they start. I trimmed the bubble layers to start later than the beginning. You can see they're trimmed back there. I could have used opacity to have them come on gradually, but I wanted them to pop on. So I just started the layer right there and they just pop on the screen there. One, two, and three, like that. Each of these guys has some kind of motion associated with them. They'll float to the top of the screen. If I select one of them and press the P key for position, you'll see that they have keyframes that indicate the starting value for position and the ending value for position. The keyframes have an hourglass shape because they have what's called ease out and ease in. That means that the bubble gradually comes out of the fish's mouth, and then goes to a constant velocity, and then gradually slows down as it gets to the top of the screen. It does that for each of those bubbles. Also, the path you might notice there, you see the path has got kind of a curve to it. Normally, when things go from one point to another, it's a straight line. But here in After Effects, you can adjust the curve using these little handles like that. Give it a little bit of a nice shape to it that you'd expect to see with a bubble floating up to a surface like that. All right, we did that kind of thing for all three of those things. We also applied effects here. We applied effects to the seaweed. I'll click on one of them, and I'll press the E key to expose the effect. The effect here in this case is wave warp. If I click on wave warp or on seaweed and look at the effect controls panel, here's the wave warp effect and has a number of properties. Wave warp is one of the few effects that actually animates the moment you apply it. The animation here is pretty big. It's kind of an extreme wave. And so I toned it down to just to kind of have a subtle wave for the seaweed there. Right now you can barely see the wave because it plays back so slowly. I'll do what's called a RAM preview later so you can see how it looks in real time. In addition to having the bubbles pop on and animate to the top of the screen, I obviously animated the position of the fish. Let me go back to the beginning here and I'll show you the fish. I'll close these guys down and take a look at the fish. There it is. And I want to see the fish's position. So I press the P key to show the position. I also want to see its scale because I changed the scale. I made it smaller and larger. So I'll done the shift key and press S so I can see both position and scale. Scroll this up a bit here like that. So you can see we have keyframes for the fish's position and for the fish's scale. I don't mean scales on the fish, I mean its size. And you can see that we've got the hourglasses there at the beginning and the end of the position, so we have it ease out as it starts off, a gradual start. Then it has a linear speed throughout here from one keyframe to the next, and then it eases into the last, so it gradually slows down. I don't use ease in and ease out for the middle here, because it would then speed up, slow down, speed up, slow down, it'd be very awkward. So we just have it smoothly start, and then goes consistently across, and then it slows down. So you can see the curve for that. Each of these little squares here is a keyframe. If I click on it, you'll see how it illuminates down here. I click on this one, takes the next keyframe over here, the next keyframe over there. So it shows you where the keyframes are physically here on the screen, and where they are in time here inside the timeline, inside this timeline view here. If I jump to a keyframe by navigating over here like that, it'll take me right to a keyframe like that. There we are sitting on the keyframe. Pull it up or down, I could change its position like so without actually changing the location of the keyframe over here. So, all right, that's how we get the fish to animate across the screen. I added one more thing here from what you might have seen in the demonstration project back in 0102 when I gave an overview of After Effects. I added text to it. Let me show you that. Text here is this one right there. The T indicates this is a text layer. Text layers have this wonderful attribute that allow you to animate the text on a per character, per word, or a percentage basis. And so I applied two animations to this text. I'll open that up to show you that. I've got something called Animator 1 and Animator 2. Each of the animators then allow you to animate some characteristic or some number of characteristics about the text. So for Animator 1, I animated position and opacity. So I have it coming up from the bottom of the screen, like so, gradually, and also gradually appearing with the opacity changing as it comes up on the screen. And with Animator 2, I just animated the opacity and had it just gradually go off the screen at the end like so. It just gradually dissolves away, starting left and going to the right. Very cool aspect of text that allows you to animate text per character or per word, or in this case, I did it on a percentage basis. So that's how things basically set up here. Let me close down these various layers so you can see them all together here, all 10 layers like that. 
what I want to do now is play this for you. And if I press the space bar, it would attempt to play it kind of gradually. It would work its way through it. And you see this little green bar building there as we go along. That's creating what's called a RAM preview. When it's done creating the RAM preview, when it's putting the whole rendered video inside RAM temporarily, then you can play it back in real time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to let this RAM preview finish here. I'm going to do a true RAM preview. It's called by pressing the zero key. And when it's done, I'll let you see the whole thing in real time. So I'm going to pause my recording here for just a moment, and we'll come back in a second. Okay, it completed its RAM preview, essentially rendering this as a video file that's stored temporarily in RAM. And you can tell it's doing that by having this little green bar here. Or how much RAM you have determines how much time you can preview here. But we've got 10 seconds preview. There are no breaks here, so the whole thing is now sitting in RAM. I have 12 gigabytes of RAM in my system, so that wasn't really a problem to use those 12 gigs to get this thing previewed. And now when I press the space bar, it'll play back in real time, so you can see how this guy looks. I'm going to click away from this layer so you don't see these little red boxes around there. And now we're going to watch this thing play back in real time. Here we go. There we are. There's the animation of the text, the bubbles popping on the screen, the seaweed waving, and off goes the fish. Try it one more time. It'll just loop through as we go by this. Watch the text fade off at the end there as well, from left to right. Also, the text is animating with a wave effect as well. So there you have it. That's our little mini project with one comp, just to give you a sense of how things work here inside After Effects.